Technique number 23, call and response. This one's a real knee slapper. A ham sandwich walks into a bar and orders a beer. Bartender says, sorry, we don't serve food here. <laughs> call and response is a technique in which the teacher asks a question and the whole class calls out the response in unison. You know, now this technique sounds simple, but it can be an effective way to engage your students, especially if they have drifted off task. Uh, call and response can make your classroom invigorating and make students want to be there. It's sort of like cheering in a crowd at a sports activity or at a baseball game. This technique also reinforces the teacher's authority and command. You ask and they do, over and over again. Uh, Students don't see call and response as behavioral reinforcement, but it makes crisp, active, timely compliance a habit, committing it to muscle memory almost. Although call and response is a fairly straightforward and simple technique, it's easy to underestimate it, focusing on its most simplistic forms. Uh, so I'm gonna give you the five different types or levels of call and response. The first type of call and response is repeat. In these sequences, students repeat what the teacher has said uh, or complete a familiar phrase that he or she starts. I use this as my most effective attention grabber. I'll give you an example. I will shout, one, two, and students will call back, three, four. Or I will call, three, four, students will answer back, one, two. A, B, C, D, students, teacher, yummy, Yucky. The pattern is what is important, not what is said. Call and response type two, report. Students will complete problems or questions on their own, and then you will ask them to report their answers back. You might say something like, on three, tell me your answers to problem number two. One, two, three. This is just a way for you to more energetically reinforce the academic work once it's completed. Call and response type three is reinforce. In this way, you'll be reinforcing new information or a strong answer by asking the class to repeat it. You might say, can anyone tell me what this part of the expression is called? Uh, Minjay will answer, that's the exponent. And you'll repeat, class, what's this part of the expression called? everyone will repeat it. Uh, in doing so, everyone has an additional active interaction with critical new content. Call and response technique for number four is review. You're simply recycling a question or piece of information from earlier in the class. This will just give students uh, an increased repetition, another opportunity to attack the problem. Call and response number five is solve. And this technique can be used to have students solve a more rigorous problem. Uh, the teacher asks students to solve a problem and call out the answer in unison, in real time. To be effective in any of the five forms, call and response should be universal. All students should respond. Uh, and to be able to ensure this, plan to use a specific signal. Get their attention by saying, class, everybody, or one, two or even a non-verbal signal, such as a finger point. You want to indicate your desire to have all your students respond in unison. This signal, or in cue, makes it clear when you're asking students to call out as a group, as opposed to individually. These types of signalings are critically important. Uh, every student should know whether a question asked is rhetorical, about to be directed to a single child, waiting for a volunteer, or asked in anticipation of full class call and response. If students don't know how to quickly and reliably differentiate your expectations when you're asking these four types of questions, you'll lose your ability to intentionally use any of these techniques. So please, teach this as a procedure, diligently and faithfully. A good in cue or signal uh, will help you to achieve close to 100% participation. You'll be able to do this because students will know that they're not going to be 
singing out an answer and singing it out alone, everybody will be cued and ready to respond as a group. Like cold call, call and response is extremely useful as part of a larger engagement strategy. It doesn't stand on alone, but it reinforces a number of other behavioral and engagement techniques that we have at our disposal. When students participate in call and response, they make a habit of doing what the teacher has asked over and over without even realizing they're practicing that skill. Uh, however, call and response has some risks and downside that every teacher should be aware of. Of course, students can just fake it. Uh, however, if you're concerned about freeloading, consider adding a gesture to the response and this will give you auditory and visual engagement and help you to test for participation. This is not the most effective way to check for understanding. Uh, however, this is an exciting way to get students answering correctly. Even those students who are lost and who are just mouthing answers, they're watching their peers and they're getting a second and third repetition at hearing the correct answer. This is an effective way to absorb information and correct answers. Teaching tip number one. If students sense that they can use their response to test your expectations, they will. They'll drag out their answers. They'll answer it in a silly voice or in a very loud manner. Or they'll answer out of sync. Uh, this is something that you have to make a priority of stopping. When the response to your call is any of those, you should be energetic and positive with your correction. It should sound something like, okay, I like your energy, that's a good answer, but I need to hear you respond right on cue. Let's try it again. As long as all students know that they are to respond, and they all know when to respond based on your cue, this will be a very effective technique in your classroom. Good luck! As always, if you like the video, you can find this one and many others on my Facebook page, Kaizen Teaching. Have a great day!